In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can install PFSense on Proxmox Virtual Machine. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So to install PFSense on your Proxmox Virtual Machine, you need PFSense ISO. So we have two different options to upload ISO into Proxmox. You go to local and then under ISO, you can upload a downloaded ISO image or you can download from URL. To download PFSense, you need to go to pfsense.org, click on download and then click on download. So the latest version is 2.8.0 and then you click on download. It's going to get you to the card page and then you select the ISO image, which is uh, the second option, the first and the third option is for hardware devices. So you choose this one and click on add to cart. And then you will need to create account on their website. And then you'll be able to download the ISO. So I already have the ISO and I have uploaded it to the ISO images folder into my Proxmox. So I'm going to close the PFSense page and let's start the installation of PFSense into Proxmox. So first of all, we are going to create a virtual machine and then I'm going to set the VM ID to 101 and then I'm going to give it a name which is going to be Firewall 01 and then next is going to be Operating System. So you're going to select the Operating System. Uh, for me, it is PFSense. So I actually have two ISOs but I'm going to use PFSense. In upcoming videos, I'll do the open sense videos as well and next i'm going to choose uh the disk you can keep the system as it is and the disk i'm going to choose is 10 gigs so by the website or by the google i searched for the requirements let me show you here so it says you need 8 gigs of storage and 1 gig of RAM and 64-bit Intel or AMD CPU. So the more you have is better. So I'm not assigning 8, I'm assigning 10 gigs. So click next and for the sockets I'm going to assign 2 but if you keep it 1 that's fine too. And you can keep the memory 2 GB that's fine because it's uh, actually the recommended one is 1 gig but I'm going to assign more which is 8 gigs because I have a lot of RAM available and then you're going to choose your WAN network first time and then click next and finish. Don't start the machine after created because as it's going to be working as the router so we, we are going to need another interface so I already have interfaces uh, configured. Hmm. I'm just going to add new network device and that's going to be VMBR2 uh, which is going to be for the LAN. And then I'm going to add this one. So just to verify, I have VMBR1 and VMBR2. So VMBR1 is ending with A7. Okay, I'm going to start the VM. And as it started, I will double click on it to see the console view. Okay, VM is started and it will start the installation process automatically. There are a few things we need to configure or set up and I will show you everything step by step. Okay, so this is the first thing, license agreement. We are going to accept this one and then we are going to hit enter on install. You can use recovery options as well if you need to recover but that's advanced level we will cover that in upcoming videos so install and then we have multiple options to choose the file system but i'm going with the auto zfs with no redundancy the stripe one and i'm going to hit space bar here so you can see the x or the star on this disk if you have more than one disk then you you can select from what disk on what disk you want to install but since i have only one so it's showing me only one but i had to select it and then i'm going to hit enter on okay and then it's the warning to 
uh, it will destroy the disk data, blah, blah, blah. So since I have the new disk, I don't care. So I'm going to hit yes and it will keep, uh, sorry, it will start inst installing the PFSense on this virtual machine. This process can take a minute to 10 minutes depending on the sources you assign on your virtual machine. But for me, I think it was even less than a minute. It's already 100% completed. And then I'm going to hit reboot. All right, PFSense is back up. And I'm just going to assign the interface name. So for the VAN one, definitely it's VTNet 0. And then for the LAN, it's VTNet 1. And then hit enter. And then it's going to confirm this will be assigned to blah, blah, blah network. Hit Y. Yes, I do want to proceed. All right, so the interfaces are configured. You can see WAN VTNet 0, which has this, this, this IPv6 address, and LAN is automatically assigned with 192.168.1.1. But we need to change those addresses because I want to set a static IP address on WAN, but you still have option to get the IP from DHCP server on WAN as well. So don't worry if you don't have a static IP address. Okay, so uh, starting from number zero is to log out from this session. And number one is to assign interfaces. So we'll go one by one. So I'm going to hit one. And should VLANs to be set up now? I'm going to say no, because I don't want to set up VLAN. And then we're going to set up the names for the interfaces, what we did already, but I wanted to set up VLANs to be set as no, so I had to go through this process. And then I'm going to assign those names again, VTNet0 for VAN and VTNet1 for LAN, and then proceed, yes. And then after this one, we will configure the IP addresses on both interfaces VAN and LAN. All right, so step number one is configured and uh, I mean step number one is done and let's go to step number two which is going to set the IP address and now it's asking which interface you want to use to set the IP address so first one I'm going to choose a WAN and so here is the option if you have DHCP server after your van you can hit Y and your van will be set up using the DHCP address but I have the static IP address so I'm gonna hit N and then I'll need to type the address and hit enter and then it's gonna ask for the CIDR notation or you can say the subnet mask number for me it's this one and then I have to type in the gateway address and then hit enter and it's asking do you want to set this as a default gateway I'm gonna say yes and then it's asking to configure the IPv6 address from DHCP I'm gonna say no and hit enter for none I'm gonna hit enter and then do you want to enable DHCP server on when no, but I want to enable DHCP server on LAN. So we will do that on the LAN interface. Do you want to revert HTTP as web configurator? I'm going to say no because I want to keep this as HTTPS. Okay, IP address is set. And then I'm going to hit enter to continue. And then again, I'm going to type 2 because I have to set up the LAN address. And now it's asking configure IPv4 LAN address via DHCP. No. And I'm going to use 172.160.1 as a LAN address. And I will use number 16. And then for the upstream, as it's a LAN interface, we don't need any upstream. So I'm just going to hit enter because it's saying for LAN, uh, press enter for none. And then it's going to ask configure IPv6 address. No, I don't want to configure that. And enter for none. Do you want to enable DHCP server on LAN? Yes, I do want. And then it's asking for the start address. 
since I want to use a few addresses for my devices to set up static IP address. So I'm going to start with 172.16.5.1. And, and now it's asking for the ending address, which is going to be 172.16.255.254. I'm going to hit enter. And again, it's going to ask me if you want to convert it to uh, from HTTPS to HTTP. I'm going to say no, I do want it to stay as HTTPS. Okay, so IP address is configured. And now we can access the web configurator using 172.160.1. So I have already Windows 10 machine here. I'm going to go into that machine and then uh, try to access with this IP address. So I'm going to just open this. And do you want to allow network? Yes, I'm fine with that. But let's check if we are getting any IP address. If not, then we will set a static IP address just to access the page and then we will do further configuration of PFSense. Okay, let's check if it's getting the IP address. If not, then the, we will restart. So it's getting uh, the previous IP address, 192, which was previously configured. So I'm going to just disable it and then re-enable it. That's the easiest way to get the IP address. There are like several ways you can do this with the command. IP config release and renew but this is the easiest way just disable the interface and then re-enable it then you will get the new IP address and then I'm gonna double click on it and see the IP address if it's in 172 range that means we are getting the IP address so you can see it's 172 16 so it's in the range what we set uh, on our router. So I'm going to go into this Edge browser. Well, normally I don't use this one, but this is a Windows machine and I don't want to install anything. Okay, so as I type in the address, you can see it says connection is not private. That's fine. Click on unsafe, continue unsafe. Okay, by default, the username is admin and the password is pf sense hit enter and then it should show you the setup wizard yes here you can see so we will go through with this process and then i will complete this video because uh this is going to be the installation process on proxmox and the initial setup and further we will do in the next upcoming videos okay so setup click next and uh uh, it's telling you some information about the support available. If you want to learn more, click on learn more. And okay, so it's asking for the host name. So remember, I set up host name uh, firewall01 and domain name. What domain name you want to use? I, I want to use zsoul.uk, which is my test domain. And then here we need to set the DNS. So I'm going to choose the Google DNS and allow override DNS and I'm going to uncheck this one click next and here it's asking for the NTP I'm just going to keep this as it is and for the WAN interface we already have IP address set up so I'm just going to hit next and make sure these two options are selected otherwise uh, firewall or the pfSense can be accessed with the WAN IP address. There are still few rules you need to enable, but I will recommend that to just keep those two options enabled. And then next, it's asking for a LAN address, what we already have set up. And uh, next is going to be step number six. It's taking a few seconds. Okay, so on step number six, you need to enter the new password. So I'm setting up my new super secure password. All right, on step number seven, it's asking to reload the PFSense new changes. I'm going to say yes, reload. And there are chances I may be logged out 
from this page because we updated the password but if not we will still be there okay so it says congratulations pfSense is now configured 